All right, we're live. Uh, if you're here already, welcome. Uh, if not, welcome when you get here. Um, we are going to do a kind of a twist on a bar fight. I know I had the bourbon bar fight series going, uh, but uh, I have Malt Muser Whiskey Review here with me today, and I'm going to pick three bourbons. He's going to pick three not bourbons, uh, but they're all going to be whiskeys, and we're going to bring them up one at a time. We're going to tell why we brought this particular one up, uh, the uniqueness of the bourbon, and we're going to try to convince each other we should try these things. So without further ado, let's bring up Malt Muser right now. Hey. Welcome. What's up, buddy? How are you? I am doing well. You know, I, it's no secret work's killing me these days, but uh, hey, it's weekend. It is know? the weekend, man. We don't got to think <laughs> anything about that. Thanks for the invite, and uh, yeah, this is going to be fun. I'm excited to uh, to do this show with you, man. I think, what has it been? Maybe two months? We did a, we did a live stream, yeah, I want to say maybe it was just after New Year's or potentially a little bit before New Year's. Hey, it was probably before because yeah. um, uh, our company was acquired by a much larger fish uh, starting about January 4th, and I've been swamped since then, so... Uh, right. I think it was probably before. Yeah, <laughs> it probably was, man. But yeah, uh, you know, glad everything's going well and you're you're maintaining enough and you still got time for some good bourbons, which is always important. Um, well, and I'm always adding to the collection. So, you know. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> yeah. All, all this work, there's more. <laughs> all this work is doing is allowing me to build the collection up beyond what I'm reviewing. Yeah, so, there you go. There you I go. can't put out as many videos. Uh, but I'll catch up one of these days. So yeah, for sure. Well, I think I think we're ready for this. I I did not request that you bring scotch, and I, I don't think you did. I did. <laughs> oh, I did. You did. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, but I'm always interested in scotch, and and I and I do have uh, one pick that I think is scotch-ish, as close as you can get. Uh, with a sure. bourbon, I think. Uh, uh, and, and again, uh, some people talk about the complexity of scotch and they, they say, oh, I love scotch because you can get all these different notes. And, and bourbon's so flat. Bourbon, all, all bourbon tastes like bourbon. Not true. Uh, I, there's I, yeah. many factors that go into the flavor of bourbon. Uh, and, and so we'll get to that first pick here in a minute. And I think th this one is a good standout. Each one of these is a standout. Now, before we get started, I want to caveat this by saying all of these are uh, straight bourbon whiskeys. All right. They were aged uh, more than four years. Uh, that, that makes them a straight bourbon. Uh, right. Regular bourbon, uh, all bourbon has to be at least 51% or more corn in the mash. Some mash bills are not known. Some, some are, some are speculated. Uh, some come out in press releases, but they don't post them anywhere. Uh, we have to go dig for that information sometimes. Uh, some of them, like Buffalo Trace, will say, this is mash bill number one, two, three, and you have to kind of guess at what, what that is. Uh, they call it proprietary secret. Yeah. Um, but, um, y you know, w w with that, uh, I, I pick bourbons that, that are not your typical bourbon. If you went and bought, like, a Jim Bean, uh, you know, yeah. and, and I don't like the 80-20 bourbons, but the, 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 none of these were finished in anything. They, these are not sherry <laughs> cast finished. They're not Cabernet finished. They're, they're straight bourbon whiskeys. That is one thing I was going to actually ask you because I was curious if you were going to go the route of uh, finding a couple that, you know, I as I've noticed recently in... Um, you, well, maybe not recent. The last five years or so, you're starting to see more and more bourbons coming out with different types of like finishes and maturations, in addition to the new charred oak, or you know, at least finishes, right? Um, and so, I was curious if that's the route you were going to go or not. Uh, no. Okay. No. no, I like I like uh, uh, you know for pure bourbon heads for people who 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 want to stick with pure bourbon. Uh, you know, now, now I was going to uh, mention that, that 80, 40 bourbon, you know, the, the 80 proof 40%, which is the minimum you can put it in the bottle and still call it a bourbon. Those are mass produced bourbons and, and, and there's nothing really wrong with it, but they don't care for their barrels and they, you know, huge warehouses and, and they probably distill them high 
uh, and then they, well, and, and they can't be more than, than a certain percent, you know, distilling. And then they, they have to barrel them at 125 proof max. Right. And, and then, of course, we get things like Elijah Craig barrel proof that's up there around 127. You can even get in the 130s. And that's because water will soak into that barrel and leave the alcohol behind and raise the proof. As long as it went in the barrel at 125 proof, it's good to be called a bourbon, even if it jacks up beyond that. Um, no. But but what they do then is they take all those barrels and then they water them down, you know, to bring that proof down yeah. uh, to that 80 proof. And, and when you do that, there's a line between, say, that, 87 88 89 you know 90 proof that hides impurities very well yeah you know and i'm not saying that that there's anything off-putting they're just watery yeah you know well, here uh, you. let me say hi to the chat right quick uh mr french is here uh jct uh daniel and jv outdoors welcome uh hope y'all get some good information ladies and gentlemen Nice to have you in the house. Appreciate it. Um, yeah. So before you jump into that, I'll give you just a quick rundown of kind of what I was thinking about when I chose these three. So uh, as you can tell, you know, my channel mentions malt because I'm more of a scotch guy, but I do like bourbon. In fact, the latest review I just posted up was of one of my favorite kind of go-to bourbons, which is the uh, Knob Creek single barrel. Um, so yeah, really into bourbon, but I chose three whiskeys for this that I'm thinking that are going to be right in your wheelhouse, or at least will give you enough interest to uh, to even try a couple things that maybe you haven't before. And so I, I have a I have a rye, and I have a Indian whiskey, and I have a single malt scotch, and Aww. it's going to be fun. I I'm actually still torn on which single malt I'm going to actually do for this three. I got two of them sitting here, but I'm not sure which one it's going to be. So. We're going to see how things go, and uh, it's going to be kind of a last-minute decision, I think, because I'm Man. thinking to myself, like, oh, what, what, is the, what is the direction I want to take this? So, That's funny you say that, because uh, about 5 p.m., I was like, oh, I have plenty of time. I, I'll, I'll sit down and pick out three bourbons. And all of a sudden, it's, it's 6.15, and, and, and I'm, <laughs> I still haven't picked all three out yet. And so, yeah, ho hopefully you can snatch one on the fly. But, yeah, I, I went... I have a whiteboard back here and I raced bourbons off there three or four times. And I really wanted um, Legion uh, up here uh, because of its uniqueness, but it is a finished bourbon. Now it's a blended finished bourbon, right? right, right uh, but right. I didn't want to put a blend up here um, or a finished or, or a blend. Um, so uh, with that, do, you want, do we want to bring out our first uh, uh, whiskey? Let's do it. Oh, oh, and before we do, you know, you were saying that you're more of a Scotch guy, but you like, you know, the other. I can tell you on that. We were talking before the, we went live and on my other shelf over here, I have a couple of scotches. One of them's not that good, uh, but I have rise over there. I have Tennessee whiskeys over there. I have, you know, other things. That's just not what my show is about. So sure, sure. I, yeah, I, I I totally put behind me. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I lately have been really getting into mezcal and really nice rums. Uh, so yeah, I, I got some other stuff too. I think, I don't know, collection wise, I'm probably 65% scotch and then 25% bourbon. And then, you know, a little bit of world whiskey, a little bit of, you know, mezcal tequila, stuff like that. I actually got into spirits with tequila, as strange as that sounds. Uh, but lately, yeah, it's been mezcal and rum. So maybe we can talk rum sometime. <laughs> oh, yeah, we might can do that. Um, so yeah. with that, let's go ahead and bring out the first pick. Uh, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and show you what I picked as as my first one. Uh, you can uh, Anyone who is familiar will recognize the top on this thing. Uh, but this is not your typical seven, uh, 1792. This is the sweet wheat. Oh, the sweet wheat, huh? Yeah. All right. You're gonna, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be eager to hear your, your elevator pitch on this one. Yeah. So the 1792, a lot of people like it. Some people don't. Uh, but what, what I've kind of found out is people who don't really like rise won't like the regular 1792. 
uh, and then the sweet wheat, uh, of course, uh, they don't uh, publish the mash bill, but y you know it's it's corn and wheat. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you you can taste the rye in the regular 1792, and it's a little heavy. I think you know the regular 1792. Now I like it; it's a fine uh, sipper. Uh, but the sweet wheat is one that from you know if you put it next to wheat wheated bourbons. Uh, this one here has a buttery uh, mouth feel to it. It's it's really uh, smooth. Oh, my mom's here. Hi, mom. <laughs> Very interesting. I um. So my immediate reaction to that is uh, curiosity. Um, as as I was alluding to earlier, like a little bit more of a Scotch guy, and the I do like high rye bourbons. So this is going to be a, a bit of a tall order. However. You mentioned about 1792, uh, the small batch, which is like their, I guess they're the standard release, like they're, they're the lowest one on the, on the yeah. 1792 total. Well, yeah, I it's actually, on the small batch. Yeah. I actually find that one to be a pretty remarkably like competent kind of intro whiskey in that range and that price oh, range. Yeah. You know, it's got that nice kind of butterscotch vibe going on. It's actually something that I kind of recommend to folks who, or maybe just trying to get into bourbon and want to try something that's you know in affordable but like got some craft quality to it. Uh, the only 1792 that I have had outside of the small batch is the foolproof, which yeah. was actually the first whiskey review that I posted on my channel when I started it, and uh, I like it, but it's a bit hot, and so yeah. I have seen this sweet wheat. Um, I've seen it not on shelves, so I'm curious how you found it. But well, I think, think on think secondary market, and on secondary market, uh, it is all the rage. So I'm curious to hear more about it. Well, I will tell you, it, I started light. This is the lightweight one, okay? If uh, somebody just turned 21 and they don't want any heat on their tongue at all, sweet wheat is the way to go. Now, it's not a complex bourbon. It is sweet and it has well you know what let me pour a little of it because uh i have to remind myself uh, of this i do remember the buttery butterscotch now uh, what you you found in that regular 1792 yep. that was the butterscotch yeah uh, just kick it up a notch for for the sweet wheat interesting and have you i'll be curious i mean maybe you know give it another taste but uh what uh where would this one fall in your um you know in your ranking of the weeded or of the 1792 range i know they got that bottle and bond they got the small batch they have the single barrel um i think for uniqueness and again i didn't pick these bourbons because i thought they were the best things on the shelf sure right? sure i picked these for their uniqueness and they are straight bourbon whiskeys so they're aged at least four years or more. Uh, a like the sweet wheat doesn't have an age statement on the bottle, but they claim that it's eight years. Now, it's really hard for me to believe that because of the color on this thing. That must have been a light char on that barrel. Mm, yeah, it is a really light uh, amber color on there. But the legs hold up well. Uh, you know, the oils in in the in the the bourbon hold, hold up well. It does coat the, the mouth, but like I said, that buttery, it's almost like getting a, a drop of like buttery oil on the tongue and it just spreads across really quickly. Is this your first bottle of it? Yeah. Uh, that, it was, uh, we, we don't get it regular around here. Uh, it's kind of hard to come by. Um, and, and that's another thing. Uh, two, uh, and I apologize, uh, but uh, this, I got this bottle for 35 bucks, but, I, <laughs> you know. 35? $35, because. Did you buy ABC, it off of the back of a truck down at the docks, man? <laughs> like, nah, ABC store, like, store cannot charge more than manufacturing. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, you see those going for like $150. In, uh, I would not pay $150 for it. I would not do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'm think my. I might pay 45 tops. Okay. If you can get it for under $45 or under 50, give it a shot. 
just for its uniqueness. I, I can just nosing this thing, I can get that buttery note off of it. Yeah, I bet. A little apricot coming through, peachy apricot uh, on there. Now, what I remember about this, let me let me get the tongue wet. Yeah, do it up. Man, you're not going to get a better mouthfeel. That is so silky, you know, mm. as you're drinking it. That's really the star of, of this bourbon is just, it's not hot at all. It doesn't singe. I mean, you can turn this thing up and swig it, you know, and it, it just coats the tongue really well. Now, the finish on it, not so much huh. because it's a light flavor you know light notes you know palate profile sure and it's man but that buttery undertone you know just flows across and it pushes all the flavor just all, all the way down but you don't get a lot of oak or, or wood out of it yeah that know? was gonna be my next question is like how is the how's the spice on this i mean it sounds you know in a lot of ways exactly like you're claim like you're saying it it's like it's a weeder man and like weeded mm -hmm. bourbons you know, tend to be, you know, a bit more on that kind of sweet and palatable side. I'd be curious if anybody in the chat has had uh, the 1792 uh, sweet wheat. Like, do let us know. He's, uh, you're getting my interest peaked a little bit. I mean, I, like I said, I do like a high rye mash, but I could see this being a good, I mean, at that price would be fantastic if I could find oh, it. Yeah. That sounds, I mean, that's, I would pull the trigger on it at that price for sure. Now, after taking that second sip, I can tell you that 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 peachy apricot is there. There is, man, it's almost like there's some spice trying to push through, but it can't get past the butter. You know, <laughs> it, it's like it's it, 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 it's it's sitting down there saying, "I'm here," but it's not really. And the finish holds the the spice more more than the, but then it's it's so short. The finish is really short. Yeah. The flavor stays on the tongue far more than the finish. All right. And so um, what was I going to say now? So like when you compare it to other high wheat mash bill bourbons, I'm thinking of Larceny. I'm thinking of, uh, you know, Weller, Special Reserve, mm -hmm. something like that, maybe Old Elk. Uh, like how, how, where does this one fit in that range for you? I mean, if you did, if cost wasn't considered, like, where would you kind of put, put that one in there? I mean, I have a, uh, what I call a double barrel <laughs> version of, of Weller over there. It's, uh, the, it's not 750 milliliters, it's the big jug. And I got it for $36 <laughs> the, in Georgia, you know, but <laughs> <laughs> and I think I overpaid for it. Uh, Weller is overhyped. Oh, I uh, agree. It is a rough drinking bourbon. I mean, uh, you know, at $36 for a, a, a big double bottle, you know, of it, pour some with some ginger ale or, or whatever. I mean, it won't even stand up to an old fashioned. If you just want to do a, 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 a drinking game or throw ping pong balls into shot glasses, use Weller. <laughs> uh, Man, you're, you're pulling no punches on the Weller. <laughs> well, now Buffalo Trace, uh, you know, that's a real bourbon. And, you know, it's sitting right over this shoulder right here. Yeah. And I buy a bottle of that every chance I get. Uh, now, I call it the the Frontier bourbon or the, the you know, outdoor bourbon. It just makes me think of uh, sitting around a campfire. But that's your typical bourbon notes. You know, you're going to get your apple caramel your spices, your, you know, all that. And, and that Buffalo Trace has them in spades. It's a little barbed wire on the throat, you know, uh, until you get a couple of sips now. Yeah. But after that, it, it smooths out really well. Uh, of course, because you're starting to get tipsy with it and you, you, your throat gets used to it and, and then you're okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, somebody just asked where you are. I didn't realize we probably didn't mention that. I, I'm oh. in... Uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Yep, and I am in Winston Salem, North Carolina, Tobaccoville. There you go. <laughs> I'm in I'm in Cheesesteak Central, so this is Cheesesteak. Yeah. <laughs> well, 
Well, that's interesting, man. And, you know, if I could, I'll just add a couple things I, about Weller. Like, first of all, if you haven't opened that 175, you probably get 200 bucks for that online. Uh, people are crazy about Weller. I did a tasting with Jack Rose, the, um, the uh, whiskey saloon in D.C., probably the, if not the best, one of the best whiskey bars in the country. And they had some amazing Weller picks that turned my head. But, of course, the price on them is just, like, outrageous. They're foolproofs and, you know, whatever. But I generally tend to agree with you. I mean, I've had the Special Reserve. I have had the uh, um, the Antique 107. I've had the 12. I mean, the 12 and the 107 are, are they're fine. But, like, again, yeah. I mean, the thing is, is, you know, you can't find these everywhere. And so you, yeah. you see them online. People are flipping these things and selling them for, like, $150 when five or six years ago, you know, these were on the bottom shelf at your local liquor store for 25, 50, you know, 40 bucks at the most. And it's just incredible how that's happened. All Weller's doing is following the Pappy hype. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, yeah. Getting the drug into it. Now, I will say the Weller 12 is a, is a decent bourbon. Um, but the Weller Special Reserve, the green label. Or yeah, yeah. I think it's green. Yeah. <laughs> it's a subpar. I mean, I, I don't put it much higher than regular old the 80 proof regular old Jim Beam with, uh, you know, stuff you can get in the plastic bottle wow. on the side. You know, I think it should come in a little plastic bottle for 675 or whatever. <laughs> um, but now again, though, you step up to the, the Buffalo Trace and, and th they make no bones about Buffalo Trace being their flagship yeah. uh, low end, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's about 36 bucks if you can find it. Uh, or you can get it for about 36 bucks, I think, from the distillery. And they sell Buff Trace right out of the gift yeah, shop. Yes, do. I, I had the privilege. Uh, I went on the Bourbon Trail um, in 2019. And uh, I did I did the full Buffalo Trace tour, which was really a fantastic experience. And, yeah, they were definitely, you could get yourself a, a bottle there pretty easily. And, yeah, it was like right on that price. I see it sometimes here in the States or in uh, Pennsylvania, you know, the, the stores around here are in Southern Jersey or Delaware. Yeah, it's in that like 28 to 32 range, give or take, you know. Um, but yeah, always a good one. Uh, and I agree with, with your governor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely uh, same thing happened here in PA. Uh, they, the, the liquor stores, they, they just had it uh, out the window service for a while. It was pretty funny. Yeah, that is a, an absolute essential service. All right, so what is your first pick? Oh, oh, before before you show it, I just want to say the 1792 Sweet Wheat, if you like a wheater, the mouthfeel is what I am putting a showcase on this thing about. That's good to know. And maybe, uh, you know, if we're, we can talk later about uh, getting each other a couple samples of these bottles. Uh, good old, uh, good old USPS. Um, okay. So uh, the first thing that I chose, and, and all of the whiskeys that I chose are following a little bit of a theme here. Uh, knowing that you are a, uh, a bourbon channel and a hella knowledgeable guy about bourbon, I wanted to get some things that I think would appeal to some of the folks that may be in the chat joining us tonight. Um, some things that maybe if they're uh, strict bourbon heads, they might consider giving a shot to. And so... Um, uh, the first thing I chose here is a rye, and it's a cast strength rye, and it's something I just really just had in the last couple of weeks, and when you wanted to do this show, I, I thought to myself, oh man, this is going to be a perfect rye to evangelize to a bourbon crowd who may or may not be into rye because it's, it's high quality. It's craft. It, it's a great bridge between bourbon and, and, and you know, more spicy rice. And what that is, is the Wilderness Trail. This the Wilderness Trail um, single barrel cast strength rye whiskey. It's called the Settler Select. And uh, I believe Daniel is in the house. Um, Daniel is the one who actually got me a sample of this. I had a bottle within a few days. So the things I want to tell you about this and why I think this is a, this is a, rye whiskey that bourbon heads may not like rye or if they even if they do like rye need to have in their life there's a couple things so first of all 
they use it like a sweet corn mash. It's like a sweet mash. So you're getting a bit more sweetness, not as much heavy spice. The mash bill on this is only 56% rye hmm. and 33% corn and 11% barley. So you are getting a, a heavy uh, corn influence on this and it shows on the palate, um, which I'll get into in just a second. But yeah, this is out of uh, Dansville, Kentucky. Um, they're relatively new on the block. You're, you're starting to see them more and more uh, in different shops around the country, which is really cool. Um, but this one in particular, they also do a lot of uh, store picks. I've already seen some store picks. In fact, I bought one already, which is uh, shows you how much I'm a fanboy of this whiskey. Mm -hmm. So this one in particular is 58% ABV or 116 proof. Um, it is a straight rye, so you are getting it at, you know, I think, what, four years? And, yep, yeah, they you know, label their bottles in each batch, all of that. It's done in a single barrel, kind of small batch fashion. And, yeah, so they provide a ton of information about this whiskey right on the label, which, again, I'm a big fan of, especially in the scotch world. You, you know, the more information, the better, uh, as things can, you can not always know everything that's going to be in it with some scotches. <laughs> so yeah, this is, it's straight out of Kentucky wilderness trail. Um, you'll find a bottle of this for about anywhere from 50 to 60 bucks, 60 on the high end. I'm yeah. not turning my back on you, by the way, I, I swear I have a wilderness trail back here somewhere. I was just you do. They do have, yeah, it's not the right though. Yeah. They have a bourbon and, um, I think there's a cast drink bourbon too. So color wise, and this may, you know, this might show you a little bit more about it. I mean, not the part whiskey, right? Um, again, only 56% rye on the mash bill. So if you're looking for that rye whiskey, that's going to be the one that you can kind of sip on, not have to, uh, you know, it's not going to destroy your palate. And if you're a bourbon drinker, who's like used to those caramel sweet notes, uh, this one is something to keep your eye out for. It's not the cheapest one in the world, but it's, uh, you know, <laughs> you're not going to be disappointed. And what I, what I really stands out the most um, for me on this, it's very fresh and you get a lot, again, we were talking about butterscotch. There's just a ton of butterscotch on this one. It's sweet. You get a bit of that nice, it's a nice rye spice, but it, it isn't, uh, overpowering. There's some nice kind of milk chocolate and dark chocolate coming off the nose. Just a lot happening, like totally worth it. We'll give this a taste. Mm -hmm. Every time I try this, I like it more and more. It's got the signature rye spice, but it, it's wrapped up in this nice creamy delivery where you get Again, your high corn, the like mm. the sweet corn, you get the the vanilla, the caramel. I mean, and I wanna just mention, I mean, value wise at 58%, this is something you would water down to drink. I just drink it neat and I'm still like, you know, that this is how rounded this whiskey is for something that's probably only four to five years old. Yeah. Um, it develops really nicely. You do get the nice rye spice. It dries a little bit. Then it's like root beer, dark chocolate, little bit of oak, and a hella long finish, man. Malted milk balls, vanilla, vanilla float, uh, root beer float with like the vanilla ice cream. You get some of the effervescence of like uh, a cola. Mm -hmm. and again, nice butterscotch. It's not tannic. It's not, you know, even at 58%, not any alcohol edges to this slight mint from that spice at the end killer killer stuff i really think this is one that folks who are bourbon heads this is worth investing in it's, it's <laughs> yeah i know b lady was asking about the uh the legs on it and the, the coating the, oh the oil yeah in. i mean yeah you're definitely getting some they're pretty thick and they're moving pretty slow which is a good sign um I, yeah, I don't know, you know, they don't have an age statement on it or anything like that. I, I'm guessing that this is probably in that five year range. Just because, I mean, it's a straight. So, I mean, that it's really sticking. Gooey, gooey, delicious, man. Nice and viscous. 
All right. Well, uh, let me let me welcome a, a few people here. Uh, Beer Chugs is here. Uh, B Ladies here. Daniel. Uh, I, I'm assuming this is Todd uh, from 21090. It's usually Todd. Um, and uh, let's see, who did I miss? Uh, Donner Pass Whiskey. Donner Pass. What's up, buddy? Good to see you, man. All right. So, uh, and, and I can only see who comments. So, you know, there may be just some people sitting back, shaking their head at everything we say. We, we don't know. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, um, I, I'm telling you, man, if you're, if you're looking for something that's, this is an easy sip and rye, man. And it, it just checks all the boxes. It really, really does. I think this is the quintessential you know, mid mid shelf rye whiskey that, you know, and plus, I mean, yeah, it's 50 bucks, but considering that it's 58% ABV, you're almost getting a bottle and a half for that price. So. Oh, hey, RV weekends is here. In fact, I'm going to put a little water on it just to see if anything else comes out of this. God, there's, it's still, there's a nice dry toffee note, like a heat bar still hanging on. I mean, the finish on this is just stupid long. Just doing a couple drops here just to see what else happens. <sighs> yeah, it smells like fresh bread. Like you walked into a bakery on Sunday. <sighs> you bought a bought a nice piece of Russian rye and then a nice, uh, you know, vanilla frosted donut to go with it. It's like you combine the two together. Mm. Quite good stuff. I, I was gonna say I'm not gonna add any water to that sweet weed. I think it would just totally evaporate. <laughs> <laughs> It's not a a high profile flavor. Uh, like like I said, though, mouth feel, you know, buttery. Yeah. Now I'm interested in that wilderness trail ride. Now it, it I was gonna say when you explain in the mash bill, it was almost like you know when you look at a photo, and you have a negative of the photo, and you you can still see who it is in in the negative, but it's all the colors are are, you know, transposed. It's like the, the flavor profile would just be transposed. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. Man, it holds up. Uh-oh. Really he's he's going to get some rare breed rye. There we go. That's a good one, too. Yeah. I mean, and this, this is one that's kind of right in that same price range. I mean, it might be cheaper, a little cheaper, but that way, uh, that rare breed rye was a tasty one. Richie Z's in the house. What's up, Richie? Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull my second one out. All right. Like I said, not I'm not claiming these are the best bourbons I have on my shelf. I picked them for uniqueness. <laughs> so uh, now there's a reason though I like this one. One, you, uh, you know, Eddie Russell. Wild Turkey, Jimmy and Eddie, you, you, you know, they're, they're, they're really, really good at their craft. This is the Long Branch. Uh, Ooh, interesting choice. Yeah. Like I said, unique. Uh, but this does have Matthew McConaughey's name on it, but you know who distilled it. It wasn't Matthew. It was, it was Eddie. Um, but uh, it, I, I find it a, a, a really good bourbon, and it has um, – it is mesquite and oak charcoal refined, right? There's Not that thin. word refined. I, yeah, <laughs> that's the funny one. What does refined mean, right? <laughs> they, they put charcoal in the barrel is what they do. Okay. Uh, and, and so I don't know when they put it in uh, during the process or whatever, right? Uh, but I can taste the mesquite in it. I lived in Texas for 17 years. Um my dad and I would deer hunt out there and the deer that eat the mesquite uh, has a different flavor, you know, uh, game is flavored by what it eats. Uh, but uh, we would smoke with mesquite wood uh, and I can really pick that up in this. And I think it has a unique uh, flavor profile, but it still has a basic wild turkey undertone to it, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, it can't be. A couple things I know about that one. 
I do know that like part of the part of the theory behind it was that uh, they wanted to make something that would be like sippable, perfectly sippable meat right out of the bottle, mm -hmm. right? And there was some there was some kind of chatter about that. Yeah, and yeah, I'm this curious, one's darker. What notes you get off of that? Yeah, this one's darker than the sweet wheat, and they're both supposed to be eight years. So, okay. uh, you know, again, though, I don't know what the charcoal refining does, yeah. you know, so uh, it could add a little color uh, to so it. I know a heavier charred barrel is going to add more color. Yeah, that's the first, the only whiskey I've ever seen the word refined used on to describe that process, which is an interesting thing. One other little anecdote that you might find interesting that I know about that whiskey, that is the only whiskey ever released by Wild Turkey that had someone's name on it other than Jimmy Reddy. Russell. Yep. And, and all they did, they, they talked to, this is the story behind it. They talked to Matthew and, and it's Kentucky and Texas or uh, wherever he's from. I think it was there. And, and, and uh, they, they said, you know, what, what do you like? What do you, and they tried different things and, and he helped get ideas, you know, for the development of it. And of course, he's good at saying what he says. And, you know, <laughs> it's like a handshake, handshake, you know, or whatever. But uh, all, right, all right, all right, all right. I get older, <laughs> <my> age. <laughs> no, but the 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 nose on it, I really get that mesquite out of that nose. I really do, and uh, uh, it, it just makes it. If you if you're not familiar with mesquite. You may mistake it for just a, a, a different oaky note or something. Sure, sure. But yeah, it's it's a good oak heavy. And of course, it says oak and mesquite charcoal refined. So, of course, you're going to get oak charcoal anyway when they char the inside of that barrel. Sure. Depending on the the level of char, you know, the number of char used. Uh, but I think they drop more in it uh, sure. while it's aging. What does a bottle of that retail for? And that's that's not an exclusive. I mean, that's real relatively available. Core and this one's highly available. You can go get it anytime you want. It's thirty six dollars, you know. And it, I don't even think they jack the prices up much across. You know, of course, some places just charge more for alcohol uh, geographically, but um, or have a much higher sin tax or whatever they want to call it. You know. Yeah. Definitely. And how would you, so full disclosure, I've had that whiskey and I'm curious, how would you describe the flavor or the taste? Well, yeah. how would you describe mesquite, generally speaking? Hang on, just... like, yeah, take your time. My general feeling on mesquite was like it, in that whiskey, it was a combination of like it's like a sweet rye almost. It smells like a sweet mm -hmm. rye, like like a uh, uh, a a tomato based barbecue <laughs> sauce. You know, not heavy molasses. It's got this kind of like spicy quality to it. A little bit of like uh, yeah, like it has a kind of robustness of, of kind of like a rye, but it's much sweeter. It's an interesting thing to uh, to try to pick apart because I mean, boy. How many mesquite whiskeys exist out there with anything with mesquite in it? I, I mean, maybe something from Balcones, but that that'd be it. Yeah, mesquite's a, a sweet uh, flavor. You know, uh, it adds a sweetness to like the deer meat and all. It, it added a sweetness to that, and it's a sweeter smoke, uh, much sweeter than like pecan. Um, and uh, you know, pecan will give you a more of a dry. Uh, smoky flavor, nutty flavor, uh, but mesquite is uh, a lot sweeter. Um, it, yeah, and and the mash bill on this though is seventy five percent corn, thirteen percent rye, so it does have some rye in it. Yeah, twelve percent malted barley. So, um, you know, you, you're getting some spice in there, but I think it's well balanced uh, for a lower end daily. You know, sipper. Sure, sure. In terms of the wild turkey range, and your, uh, you know, 
where where does it fall in your uh, in, with you on in terms of the kind of core range wild turkeys? I mean, you know, you got the 101, and then the the single barrel Kentucky Spirit, and then there's that other one, the the full proof rare breed. Rare breed. Yeah, I'm a fan of the uh, Russell's Reserve. Um, let me see the the red bottle, the Russell's Reserve uh, single barrel. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and I have the ten year over there, but uh, I like the the single barrel a little bit better. Um, but I, I'd like the rare breed. I love it. You know, yeah. um, I mean, I, I like wild turkey enough to have hung a sign up. Well, the sign says "Beware of wild turkey," but uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but uh, I did buy something that said "wild turkey" on it. But um, you know, it's uh, it's a staple. You know, like beam. Uh, you know, uh, Beam Suntory lineup, you know, with the Bakers and Bookers and all of that. I think, you know, Wild Turkey has a, a similar progression in line. I think uh, Booker, though, uh, Booker, no, uh, with Little Book and all, they're getting up there, um, you know, with 130 bucks a bottle. Uh, and they're trying to drive uh, Bookers up that high. Uh, yeah. When I bought the Booker's 2019-03 Country Ham, I thought it was awesome. Uh, I Then I went back and I bought that bottle for about $75 and I went back the, the next go around and it was 80 something dollars. And I bought it and I didn't like it uh, near as much. And I was like, I just paid more for a bourbon that wasn't as good as the bourbon I paid 10, $10 $15 less, you know? Yeah. So I just quit buying bookers. They they my channel I cap at a hundred dollars. I I won't go over a hundred. Now I know you can still get bookers for under a hundred, but I also That's, don't. You got to hunt for it these days. Yeah, but I don't want to also bring crap, you know. And I hate spending a hundred dollars on on a hit or a miss. Right, right. You know, and then I read the reviews and they're like, it's okay. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm not going to take a chance on it. What do they do? They put out like four of those a year, five of those a year now? Yeah, something know. like yeah. that. And, you know, I'm not going to go broke. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Daniel says Country Ham was the last great one. And it was also the last great one that I could find under 80 bucks. So, yeah. Um, well, the only ones that I've had, I, I bought the, uh, I have an old one from like 2015 called like the Mama's Batch or something like that. And then I have the, 2018-01 Kathleen's batch, which was 69.99, but yeah, I've not bought one since. I did do a blind uh, cast drink bourbon tasting, and the country ham came in second in that tasting. And so mm. I've uh, been thinking a little bit more about maybe hunting it down. But yeah, the prices just seem like they've gone much like a lot of bourbon. They're just kind of gone a little bit off the rails. Yeah, well, exactly. yeah, I uh, I'm I'm with you on the I'm with you on the Long Branch. I think it's a really solid whiskey. It's got some uniqueness. It's a little bit more dynamic than the 101, but you still get some of that classic wild turkey notes in it. You know, the, the cotton not, candy, the straw. The, you know, I get a lot of that uh, caramel corn yeah. cotton candy thing in uh, in wild turkey, especially yeah. on the rifles. But it's still there, and it's still there. That that that. Um, you know, even candy corn, you know, because it leaves that dry finish across the tongue, you know, because the sweetness goes across and then it pulls away and it, it's like that chalky candy corn. It's still yeah, but yeah. Not a bad way, but it, it's just what it reminds me of. Uh, but it, when it does that, though, and it and it dries off the tongue, it leaves those good oak notes behind. And and that's where the mesquite really shines, and that's where the you know the darker oak notes really come through, and that's why I selected it uh, for this because um, I think it's just a good unique uh, wild turkey. Uh, Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that's a good pick, man. Um, I I'm I'm aligned with you on that. It's I'm really interested in that one again, and I I had a. Man, it's been a long time since I had it. I, you, you got me thinking about how I want to try that again. <laughs> Looks like we got like yeah, eleven folks in the chat. By the way, yeah, so we're we're like halfway through so far our uh, our six whiskey. So uh, if you if you get to pop that thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't subscribed to Bourbon Bounty, hit them with a sub. If you haven't subscribed to Malt Muser Whiskey Reviews, feel free to sub. 
love to uh, build more whiskey community with y'all. And we're going to keep going here as we uh, head into our uh, second half of the tasting of the the whiskey bar fight. All right. All right. So uh, for folks just joining, um, I had to choose three non-bourbon whiskeys that I think would be compelling and interesting to uh, – Bourbon Bounty here. The first one was a was a rye. We're going uh, way, way far from Kentucky with the second one. And the second one that I chose is the Amrut Fusion. Um, Amrut Fusion is a single malt whiskey from India, distilled in Bangalore. Um, this is pretty readily available in the United States. It's around a $60 bottle. Uh, what's very unique and interesting about this one and why I think for a bourbon drinker, this is going to be one of those like whiskeys that you could probably, you know, you're, you want to try something a little different, but it's not going to be like a dramatic shift compared to bourbon. Um, I can't say enough about this. So the story behind the Amrut Fusion. So it's called Fusion because you are actually getting both. They, it is distilled with both Scottish barley and Irish barley. So in the uh, in the Scottish barley, there's a little bit of peat. So there's a little bit of the characteristic single malt scotch peatiness that you get off like Isla whiskeys. But this is by no means a smoky whiskey. Or mm. uh, interesting, interesting note about the Amrut distillery. So they're at about 3,000 feet uh, above sea level. And their angel share of evaporation is upwards of 11 per 10 to 12 percent uh per year out of everybody so you imagine like they're not going to be putting out any 25 year old whiskeys anytime soon but because of the tropical climate you're getting a lot more maturation in a shorter period of time so while they're losing a lot they at the same time are getting you know because that humidity and heat is so much there the the breathing of the wood is happening a lot more and you're getting a lot more going on there so uh, this one is bottled at 46% ABV. It is non-chill filtered. It's won a bunch of awards, and I think for good reason. Um, and India in general is just, a, there's been a lot of great whiskeys coming out of there. Uh, Amrud being one of the big name distillers. There's another one called Paul John. And this is all uh, ex-bourbon barrel. So you're going to be getting a ton of the bourbon notes in this whiskey. Um, this is what the... Uh, bottle looks like of the Amrut Fusion. And, oh, I'm sorry. I was actually wrong. This is bottled at 50%, not 46%. So this is, you're getting a good high ABV for uh, your your $60. That's so what the color looks like. Kind of a, yeah, pretty nice. Kind of a pale, you know, a little pale, a little cloudy, which is good because, you know, there's not been any chill filtration put into this whiskey, which is fantastic. Um, and what I what I think is most uh, compelling about this particular pour is it does have some of your characteristic bourbon notes: the apple, a little bit of the caramel, the toffee, the chocolate, a little bit of the oak spice. But it is an incredibly complex whiskey. When you nose this, it's like a bonanza coming out of this glass. Mm. Oh, tropical fruit candied fruit, peach, plum, raisin, all that. I mean, there, it is just like a bouquet of different fruit notes. There's a nice molasses undercurrent, which is why I think, you know, for the bourbon palate, people who are really into bourbon, that is, uh, that's going to kind of keep you compelled. I mean, this is what, this would re reminds me a little bit of, yeah, just like a very kind of fruit forward bourbon in a way. You don't get any of the smoke despite it having some peat in it. I'll give you a give you a little rundown of the palette. Mm. Stupid good. Hey, look, wait one second before you keep going. B lady, I haven't seen any prices jack up here, but we're ABC stores and they can't charge more than MSRP. I don't know if prices uh, have gouged a little during COVID or not outside of here. Man. This, it just arrives with so much energy, so much complexity, and yet soft. It's got a nice kind of like 
slippery soft arrival and it's just juicy fruits. I'm talking about things like, again, there's the darker ones, the plum, there's a little bit of the dried raisin, the fruit, you know, the dried fruit notes, but then you just get a ton of sweetness and it's coming from, you know, mango, it's uh, pineapple, it's again, the medium fruits, yellow apple. And then as it develops, you get a bit of the oak, the effervescence from the peat, but again, no smoke. I mean, I would argue this is less smoky than a, uh, you know, some bourbons in terms of like the way the oak hits you. It's just mouth coating. It goes into a long finish and it's really on that second half of the whiskey that the traditional kind of bourbon notes start shining through. You get the dark molasses, a little bit of maple syrup, butterscotch, vanilla, and then it goes in, you get a nice long finish, juicy fruit gum, a little bit of cinnamon, a mm. little bit of nutmeg. It is just a flavor experience. And for the price, again, I mean, this is around 60 to 65 USD at 50% ABV. I mean, I'm drinking this neat. It's, it's just a wonderful pour. Sounds great. I mean, yeah. you, you, and, you kind of sold me on that one. <laughs> yeah, dude, this is the thing that I love about it. So, I mean, obviously it's a single malt, it's hundred percent malted barley, but I'm, but the, I think the, the main thing here is, is to, for people who are not into scotch or think all scotch is heavily peated and smoky, like, yes, there's some peat in this from the Scottish barley because they're fusing these, they're using barley. It's all distilled in India, but they're using both uh, Scottish barley and Indian barley in the mash. So you're getting like a little bit of different complexities regarding the the kind of, you know, the grain notes that, you know, there's some like fresh cut hay kind of thing going on in here. There's honey. It's like every single time you go into this, you're picking out something else. The complexity just punches above its weight, man. I, I was, I had only had the regular single malt en route at the low end of their spectrum before. And this was kind of the next one that most folks get. And man, it is, it's killer. It's just killer. So I highly recommend it. Um, I think this is one you'll want to have sometime in your life. And uh, I, I'd love to hear some folks in the chat. Have you had the uh, the Wild Turkey Long Branch? Have you had the Amrut Fusion? Does this sound interesting or compelling to any of y'all? They're great, man. It sounds good. I don't know where it fits in in your life. It's like, it's like it, it's equally like a treat. It's like something you pour for somebody that you're having over. You got, you're gonna have a couple of whiskeys. God, now it's white chocolate. Jesus, there's just so much happening. You know, it's one of these that's like, hey, you want to try something kind of interesting? You can you know, hang out with your whiskey friends, and compare notes. But it's also just a great change of pace whiskey. And your palate's getting that kind of you know, the, the palate fatigue and the burnout and you're, you know, you want to have something that's just going to liven it up, something way, something different, but still like playing this on the same field. It's not like a scotch. This is, this is where it's at, man. Love it. All right. Andrew Page is in the house here as well. Hey, what's up, Andrew? Good to see you, buddy. All right, so before we get into the last one, I want to say that we will try to get through these last ones here. Uh, the I won't call it the finale or anything. I mean, I didn't. I put these in, in, in a particular order. This last one I chose is, is closer to a traditional bourbon, but it does have some unique qualities about it. Um, and it's relatively moderately easy to find um but it is the highest price the first one i have was 35 dollars. 36 dollars was the second one this one's closer to 65 70. Okay. uh but nothing outrageous um you know i tried to keep it there and if y'all want to stick around after we review these bourbons maybe we'll talk about some runner-ups that we didn't pick and why sure. uh, all right so my Third pick for showcasing tonight is Bell Mead Cast Strength Reserve. Oh, 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 you are pulling no man. Okay. Now, 
I will tell you, I did not pick Elijah Craig B520 because I know you've had it. So. <laughs> you do, because I, I gawk about it pretty much anytime anybody talks about Elijah yeah. Craig. <laughs> if I'm trying to convince you of something, I, I would have won with that one. So Yeah, yeah you would have won with that. So far, you've definitely got me convinced to take a second peek at the at the at the Long Branch. I'm uh, I'm, I'm I'm definitely vibing a bit on the sweet wheat. It's just damn hard to find. Yeah, it is. Now this is definitely going to be the darkest one. There's no age statement on it, but it also doesn't have a, as much water added, you know. Sure. Uh, but it is dark. The the darkest amber here. The reason I chose this one, uh, it has an explosion of notes, but they're very dark, like cocoa notes, you know, and, and roasted fruit and, you know, raisins and, you know, here and there. Yeah. Oh, man, that is, that's a winter sipper. Uh, you know, if you think about when do I want, Apple or the the uh, uh, you know spiced apple cider and cocoa and yeah. all of that stuff you know that, that's around in the winter you know around Christmas time or whatever and this one is definitely a good one I mean the legs are developing already moving very thick and slow this thing will coat your tongue in a heartbeat and what's the ABV on that one. It's not that high. It's uh, uh, 111.2. So they just barreled it at a lower proof. But I don't argue with them because the flavors are so explosive. Yeah. They, they, they must have finessed it where they wanted it and then barreled it and said, we're not going to mess with it, you know, once it. It's not that punchy because it's only 111, you know, like uh, so, some of them, the barrel proofs and all will have that ethanol kick that'll, you know, make you, make you pull back on it. This one doesn't do that. Uh, it, you still have to use your, your nose hair trimmer. <laughs> it won't burn them out. Yeah. I'm, I'll be curious what your thoughts are on the finish on that one. I've not had it just to be clear. I've not had that. I was hoping. Um, uh, you know, the initial on it, of course, this is slightly, it's not hot at all. Okay. But it, it's a little more tingly across the tongue, of course, than, than the others, because they're lower uh, ABV. I mean, and, and some people, I, I, I will tell you, I'm one of them that, I, I like my lower end bourbons to be 90, but long branch is an exception. It comes in at 86. Right, 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 right. right, right. It's up there knocking at the door, but it, you know, it's only halfway there. Don't you um, love when you find a whiskey that like, when you drink it and you're like, wow, this is drinking like it's a much higher proof than, than it is. And like, that's always a good sign. You know, I, I, I come from the opinion that a 40% whiskey should be good out of the bottle, but so many times, you know, that extra 3% or 6% or 10%, I mean, it makes a world of difference. You know what? Old oh. Forester 1920. I can almost see the residue of it on the board. I erased it and put bell meat up here. <laughs> I'm glad you did because I got, I, got I got a bottle of the 1920 behind me and boy, let me yeah. I love that entire whiskey rose series from Old Forester. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I have, I have them all down here behind me. Yeah, and I, I know I'm blocking the shelf here, but and even if I move, there's still shelves down below with more bourbon on them. Um, but uh, yeah, I had Old Forester 1920 up there. The only thing for me is I think the Bell Mead is a little more cocoa forward that than the 1920 oh really oh yeah okay but but it's a dry cocoa you know sure but it, it almost lends itself to a spiced um like a, a raisin plum something you know sure i'm gonna tell you something man i was at uh 
I was out hunting a little bit for some bottles today, and that one, <laughs> that one, I see it often, and I'm always like, that, I mean, I'm always like, uh, it's one of those that's, and maybe you have some whiskeys like this too, where like, they're like those cusp whiskeys, where you're like, you know you want a bottle of it, but you end up always buying something else, and mm. like, Bellamy uh, Cast Strength Reserve is one of those for me. I, I always am like, you know, I got to get this because I, I know it's going to be fantastic. I'll tell you oh, a little yeah. why later, why I know it'll be fantastic. But uh, it, but it's always one that I, I kind of skip over. And I got to admit, you're, you're, you're maybe finally pushing me to be like, dude, just pull the trigger. You know this is going to be a good bourbon. And they're out of Tennessee, Nashville? I mean, they're not – are they still sourcing their whiskey? I guess is the question. Is now, that you know what? That's one that um, I have not done that much research on. Uh, let me see what, what's on the bottle here. And, and, and the reason I didn't do a lot of research on this one was because I had Old Forrester up there, <laughs> you know, at first, <laughs> almost until yeah. the last minute. Yeah, yeah. I feel... Uh, Oh, it doesn't say. It just says Greenbrier Distillery uh, on, on the back. Um, but uh, so where uh, I don't I don't know if they're they're distilling. I don't know where Greenbrier is. I don't know where where the Bell Mead is. Um, I was going to put the company names up there, but uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, yeah. G GBS usually is the listing for the distillery. Right, right, right. Yeah, the mash bill on this thing, 64% corn. So not as high corn as Wild Turkey Long Branch, 30% rye. And they hide that 30% well. I mean, I, I'm not saying, but the spices are, they're there, and but, but they don't, they're not peppery. They're more like Christmas spice. Sure. I mean, somehow. Yeah. You know they have have done this thing justice in in in, uh, in the distilling process and, and barreling and aging and all that they've uh, and and it may have to do something with cutting that alcohol down. I don't know what they distill at, you know, and then cut it. I know they cut it back to um, at least it's probably more like 110 proof or something for it to end up being 111.2, you know. Or something like that, but they get it right where they want it, and then they put it in the barrel. I'm digging it, man. I am digging it. That is one that I, again, it's been on the radar for well uh, longer, you know, longer than I care to mention. It's, it's. I know. So, like I said, I'm gonna. I'll tell you a little bit more about my experience, my Bellamy stuff later. But uh, I. I wanted to buy that bottle for some time. And, you know, when you're talking about the cocoa forward, which for me and the high rye, which for me is like, where, like, that's kind of my wheelhouse. It's one of the things I love about the old Forester is that kind of just like chocolate, chocolate mm -hmm. milkshake kind of thing. Like, I, I love that quality of it and its texture. And the Bellamede, yeah. Uh, it sounds like it's right up that alley. I think you got me sold on that one, man. You got me sold. Yeah. Now, now the Bell Mead, uh, the Old Forester 1920 is a little sweeter. Uh, this does that uh, that dry evaporation thing, le leaving those Christmas spices behind, the nutmeg and all of that. Yeah. Uh, the finish on it. Yeah. I, I, I can still taste it. I mean, and like it'll start fading and I don't even have to take another sip. I can just swallow again. And it's almost like, bam, it wakes up. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so it's pretty long finish. Uh, and I'm getting that, uh, uh, the, those Christmas spices turned into more of peppery. You get more of a true rye spice kick on the finish. Put it that way. All the Christmas happens up here. All of the, the real mash bill happens on the finish. All right. I'm game. Sign me up. <laughs> I'm, gl I'm glad to hear all of this. Uh, this is this is encouraging. I, I like. Uh, have you had it? I'm just out of curiosity. Have you had any of the other Bellamy stuff? The 
uh, you know, they have like a couple different like finished whiskeys. There's a Madeira finished. There's a there's a no, that they have. Um, I know they have a Bell Mead Reserve that's not cast strength, and I'm afraid to buy it because I I'm like I don't want to buy half of what I have. You know. <laughs> Yeah, it's like I'm so in love with this one, you know. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. But no, I I, I never was a a huge uh, Bell Mead fan until this one came out, and I um, it was kind of hard to get, semi hard. And I, I'm one of the guys that goes in, and people re well now I have to announce who I am because you know we're all wearing the masks. <laughs> yeah, they're starting to recognize my hats I wear, you know, when I come in. Uh, but uh, I'll walk in and, and uh, around here, so, some of the ABC stores are different. Some of them will say, I'll say, hey, you got anything behind the counter back there? And they'll, they'll say, what are you looking for? And I, and I, then I started going, well, I can go in alphabetical order if you want, you know, <laughs> um, and I'll just start naming a bang, 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 bang. Um, so they finally got tired of, of me reciting the, the bourbon alphabet. Uh, so uh, there was one store I would go into, and, and there there were a couple of ladies back there, older ladies, and I'd pick with pick at them, you know, and I'd walk in and say, "Hey, mama, you got anything back there for me?" You know, <laughs> and and she would say, "No, nah, sugar, nothing but too much love for you to handle," you know, or something Ooh. like that, you know, and, and you know, just but but it, it's building a rapport, joking around, uh, and then when you walk in, they're like. Hey, come here, come here, come here, you know, and talking bourbon with them and letting them know that, that, you know, you have some knowledge of it. You know, I've gone in, in those stores before and they recognize me and somebody will come up asking a question and they'll say, hey, if you want to know about bourbon, go talk to that guy right over there, you know, as a customer, you know, yeah. and I'm willing to talk to anybody about it anytime. So, you know, there I've, I've met a few people that way where they really you know what one of them was it was close to christmas and he's like my dad likes bourbon i don't know anything about it what should i get him sure well uh what you should do is go to this other store <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> what you should do is actually <laughs> it's like when you're standing in uh, you know in a liquor store and you you hear somebody who's like not very knowledgeable about anything and they're like talking to a, a sales rep, you know, and you're just like cringing. You're just like, oh, oh I, I, know. I just want to jump in there and be like, no, don't uh, we'll spend your money on that one. This is shit. <laughs> Buy this. <laughs> if that, those are always uh, moments. I, I, I had one recently where I was, ah, oh, God, yeah. I, I had swung into a total wine in Delaware to like, uh, I was just running in to get some liqueur actually. And you know, you got to walk through the scotch aisle. You got to walk through the whiskey aisle. You got to walk through the bourbon aisle and like listen to these people who, you know, they, it's all just the marketing, you know, like, the, oh, I know that this is supposed to be good. And I'm just like, dude, for $5 less, you could get a freaking four roses small batch. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Don't. Yeah. Do and I'm like, hey. I'll tell you what, it's four roses small batch. Um, they have changed. Uh, a little. Uh, I it might I have been years, but I, I mean, I, I'm a fan of their single barrel. It's one of my like go tos. I, I do love their single barrel again because of the high rye. Um, but I, I haven't had the small batch in quite some time. I, when it first first came out, I thought it was the most phenomenal higher, but, but it was a blend, you know, right? Uh, yeah, right. Higher, it's blended with a high rye. You know, because right. right. the single barrel has a, like a thirty-six percent rye or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it's the higher one. Yep. Yeah, and uh, I have a bottle of it somewhere behind me, uh, but I like it a lot. You know, the thirty-six yeah. percent rye, and then um, the uh, single barrel or the uh, small batch is a blend of Four Roses bourbon. Right. Yep. So you know it has some of the thirty six percent in it somewhere. Um, but when when I first tried it, I thought, man, this is phenomenal. You know, for the price, it's like thirty bucks. You know, and I went and bought a, 
a couple of more bottles of it. And then I was sharing it and, and trying to get people to, to get on the bandwagon, you know, and they would go buy a bottle and say, what you gave me wasn't what I bought. And so I went and bought another bottle of it and it was not the same. And then they came out with the four rows of small batch select. Yeah, where they got the four of their recipes blended in there, yeah. And I'm like, whatever, y'all screwed up. You had it. You had it. You were going to start, you know, building a little brand loyalty. But I still, I, I don't have much against Four Roses. I'm just yeah. picky about, I like the, the regular Four Roses single barrel. Yeah, I'm with you on that. It's worth it. If if, if the choice is between the two, you spend the extra eight bucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally, man. Good deal. Well, yeah. You right. guys, uh, what is it? What is it? <laughs> all right. So, yeah. So, for folks who've just joined, I was tasked with finding three non-bourbon whiskeys for this bar fight challenge. And I have done a rye. I've done a Indian whiskey. And now I need to go to my kind of bread and butter, uh, which is single malt scotch. Uh, this was not easy. But uh, I've chosen one that I think think uh will appeal a lot to you because i think i have a little bit of i mean a barometer on kind of your acumen and your uh style as it comes to bourbons and the your knowledge of it but i also think this is one for bourbon fans who want to try something a little bit more unique in the scotch whiskey world uh and and have a have an experience whether it is a good bad and different one um i think this is one that really showcases the really the fundamentals and the like essence of scotch whiskey and my choice for this is the ben romick 10 years old Mm. Um, this is the older labeling they have recently changed it it will now look more like uh more like this but um this is the this is a 10 year old ben romick and so the bottle there you go so let me give you the rundown on why i think ben romick 10 is a is a whiskey for you to try um this is not a beginner scotch per se i think it's got a it brings a lot of complexity like i said this i think captures a lot of the essence of scotch whiskey and this is why I think so. First and foremost, the the maturation on this is, again, single malt scotch, 100% malted barley that has been aged. Uh, the whiskey in here is 80% of it has been aged in X bourbon barrels and 20% of it in X Oloroso sherry. So you are getting both a high amount of the bourbon characteristics, but you're also getting a bit of X sherry, which is an important thing with Scotch whiskey because there are so many good Scotch whiskeys that are aged in sherry. The other thing about Ben Romick that I want to mention, so this is bottled at 43%. So it is, uh, you know, above average. I think this is probably one of the most intriguing whiskeys in the 10 year old range. You'll find a bottle of this for around 40 to $50, give or take. Um, they do things, they do their maturation in warehouses the old world way. And what I mean by that is they use uh, classic, what are called dunnage warehouses. And a dunnage warehouse is different than like your average warehouse in that it is earthen floors. So the floor is not uh, wood or concrete or whatever. Ben Romick, who is o actually owned by an independent Scotch bottler called Cadenheads, um, they actually, or signatory, my bad, uh, they actually uh, use the old earthen floors and there's not a ton of Scotch whiskey distilleries that do that. And what that does, in my opinion, is in terms of the flavor, is it imparts a bit of like um, mustiness, a bit of foostiness, a bit of like uh, you walked into a, a an old basement, right? Or uh, you have a bunch of damp wood outside your house after a rainstorm. It imparts some of that kind of uh, moist earthiness to it that I just don't think you get in a lot of whiskeys, let alone uh, whiskeys that are at this price range. The other thing I'll mention about this Ben Romick is that it has a little bit of peat too. So there's a bit 
this is around 10 to 15 what's called parts per million ppms of peat smoke so there's a little bit of peated malt in here but it's not again this isn't a this is not an isla lafroig art bag smoky whiskey but it's got just a little bit and it gives just brings a little more pro dynamism and profile to this so the benromic 10 is uh is my choice for the third one and again i i will give you kind of my flavor notes on this right away off the nose it smells like you walked into a you went to a place an orchard and there's those paper bags of apples that they're selling to you and you mm. smell them when you're not even right in front of them right you can just smell them there's a ton of that coming out of here you're talking bright apple notes and this is again coming from the ex-bourbon it's the way the barley goes with the uh interacts with it it's got just this other note you know when you walk into a a, a, a local brewery right mm -hmm. you know you go to your little there's a little craft brewery in your town and you go into the tasting room and you smell that yeastiness the breadiness that grainy quality there's a little bit of that in here so you think about that with some apple, and then behind that sweet apple, you get some toffee, some caramel, light vanilla, and it it doesn't overwhelm you. A little bit of a bonfire smoke, like a bon, like a bonfire on the beach. A little bit of salinity. There's just a ton going on here. A little bit of a strawberry shortcake thing going on. Mm. There's just a lot happening, but everything is within balance and nothing is too loud on the nose nothing is like overwhelming you right every time you go in you get a little bit more i think the most dominant note is the apple note but it's it's just got this great and and again the the fruit notes are coming off that sherry too i mean the, you you get some of the slightly darker fruit there's some maybe uh cranberry some maybe plum just a lot happening in this, like a ton of complexity for a 10 year old whiskey. And in, in Scotch whiskey terms is a very young whiskey. Right. The taste here. It, it's deceptively light, arrives really light, sweet barley sugar forward, cane sugar. Uh, fresh cut hay, and then you get this surge, and it's like mocha, dark chocolate, slight oak spice, bit of, um, again, malted milk balls. You get some of the juicy fruit. It's mouth-watering. Like, it makes your saliva glands just, like, explode. Yeah. wake up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and this is only at 43% ABV. There's yeah. peach. There's like a peach note. It's well rounded. It goes into a medium finish where you're left with, again, if you took like a bunch of fresh grain in your hand and you kind of rub it together like you do with a spice and you get the essence of it, you get the real like pungency. That's what you get on the back end of this. And that's coming from that Dunnage Warehouse thing. It's this kind of earthy, kind of damp, kind of vegetal almost taste. But it's wrapped up in a creaminess of, of, of the bourbon notes, the vanilla, the toffee, the caramel, the slight brown sugar. Medium to medium long finish. It's just fantastic, man. It's it, This is – now, I will mention um, with Scotch whiskey, unlike bourbon, Scotch whiskey is allowed to add E150A caramel colorant to their whiskey. And that's been right. – you know that, but – the, you know, for folks watching, that's something that's done to like uh, get uniformity in their bottles. I Ben Romick is not very um, well. They're not very. They don't have a ton of information, so we can assume that they've probably added some colorant to this, and it's probably been chill filtered, which you know is is a you know, something that you ding them for a little. Obviously, you would prefer they didn't, but I I really don't think it takes much away. At the forty-five to fifty-dollar price point, this is a scotch that I think not only will bourbon drinkers enjoy, but it will like people who are just looking for something to just get into scotch, but they don't want to just have something kind of bland and boring. This has got some 
some personality. It's got that old world feel from the Dunnage Warehouse. I can't say enough about it. Uh, this is one of my favorite distilleries that I've been getting into this year. Uh, yeah, Ben Romick 10. Love to hear in the chat if anybody has had this one before. And it yeah, was, people, uh, uh, well, uh, I know Andrew and Daniel have been going back and forth about it, but uh, oh, good. yeah, good people. <laughs> I'll definitely, uh, you know, it's like for me, trying to find a, a scotch is, is, you know, I, I'm in a dark room and I'm, I'm trying to pop a balloon. Yeah, with where do you start? Dark. Yeah. <laughs> and you so, know, yeah. no, it's good. To, and I watch some of your reviews sometimes and, uh, you know, and I, I try to, you know, pick out some notes and everything. I just, I've had some scotch in the past. It was before, you know, I was really, uh, you know, they, they, we, we always say uh, uh, a lot of things are wasted on youth, you know. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I, I was, uh, I, I was drinking to not to taste it. Right. You know, and uh you know, I was, I'm prior military, you know, so traveled the world, uh, had, uh, you know, Scotch in Scotland, uh, you know, and, and uh, yeah. went, went to uh, taverns and pubs and, you know, all over the place. But, uh, uh, you know, we had a good time. They used to call me Wee Man over there. I'm only like five, ten and a half or something, you know, and I weigh a heck of a lot more than I used to. Um, that's yeah. that's I mean, I'm six, four, so I'm like taller than the average bear, but, but, uh, that, you know, there's a lot of, I think a lot of the guys I would meet in Scotland are around six foot tall, you know, <laughs> but, but they were, burning. Exactly. I mean, I had a little, I, I had, I had muscle tone, but I'd, you know, I, I was fit in the military, but it, I wasn't, you know, bulked out. And some of these guys have the big bellies and the, and the, you know, the big chest to go along with it. Yep. And, uh, you know, we'd crack a joke and one of them would hit me on the back and say, oh, we have a funny wee man here. And it would knock the wind out of me just about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and I think like the reason I brought this one up, there are a lot of scotches I think are great for like scotch beginners. You know, your Glenmore G10, your, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, there, there's a ton of them that are like, you know, there's a there's one called a. Uh, there's a Glenfiddich. It's called the 14 Bourbon Cast Reserve. It's like the most bourbony scotch you can have. Like I think those are all introductories. And the reason that I chose this one is because you, and I can tell by the things you chose, like you have a, you know, you're like in that intermediate range too, like me, where like you got a dynamic profile. You you've you've mm -hmm. sampled enough. You've tasted enough. You've thought about it enough. Where like you pick out subtleties, right? You were mentioning this in the beginning. Like a lot of people think bourbon is like a two note pony, but it's like no, nah, there's there's other stuff in there that you can pick up. Yeah. And when you're at that point, that's why I didn't want to be like, oh, you know, just try going more G10. Like you need, I, I I wanted to recommend something to you, and and honestly to the folks viewing who are like, you know, this is something that's got a little character, right? Yep. yep. A characterful single malt, and. You know, you mentioned about like youth. Most people in the world think scotch is just like heavily smoky and abrasive, just like everybody when we were in college age, you drank uh, Cuervo Gold and threw up all night, and you think that's tequila when it's not even yeah. actually <laughs> <laughs> like you know, I'll never drink tequila. How many people in your life have said they'll never drink tequila again because you know, in 1994. They got sick because they drank five shots of Cuervo Gold. It's like that's not actually good tequila, nor is it actually tequila at all. <laughs> like that's tequila flavored. Like, yeah, right. It's like a tequila you flavored spirit, yeah. right? And you know, those are the things that you got to overcome. And and I, I find this particularly true with with Scotch is that like the I agreed with your beginning statement that people underestimate the dynamism of bourbon and that people tend to try to say that scotch is so much so much more dynamic than bourbon and like i do think that malted barley in general it imparts more subtlety than maybe high corn does and so like in that sense i do think that like Scotch whiskey has a broader range of like flavors you can pick up. But I think that people 
And, and, I, and But it doesn't mean that it's good, nor that people will like it. The thing that I think is, you know, among Scotch dorks uh, is, you know, the ones that hate on bourbon is like, they're really missing out on a lot. And some of the bourbons that you brought up tonight are testaments to that exact fact is that like, there's a ton of really interesting bourbon. Not everything is, uh, you know, sweet corn and oak and caramel. Like there's a lot more happening in a lot of good bourbons if you spend the time with them. And that's the thing that I think is, you know, needs to be evangelized to people who, you know, I'm in the bourbon camp or I'm in the Scotch camp. Like there's so much <laughs> that people can agree on. Uh, and I'm in the whiskey camp. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, I'm right there with you. And uh, yeah, I, again, I'm more than happy to uh, arrange something where I can send you some samples of this stuff and, and give you the opportunity to try them. But yeah, I would love to hear if there's anybody in the chat who has strong opinions one way or the other about this or are uh, whiskey, whiskey campers like uh, Bourbon Bounty and I. <laughs> All right. So while, while we're waiting on, on, on any rollouts um, in the chat, I will say my my honorable mentions tonight. Let's do it. Uh, one of them is uh, right here. Old Tub. Oh, yeah. So Old Tub is Jim Beam, and it's bottled in bond, so it's 100 proof. Uh, if, if you don't know, bottled in bond, it has to be 100 proof. Um, and it's uh, this uh, aged in a bonded warehouse under like strict control, like the federal government does inspections and yada, yada, yada. And, and that is not, doesn't make so much of a big difference these days. I mean, because they're all regulated to a point. If they get caught putting bourbon on something that's not a bourbon, they'll, you know, slash them pretty hard. Um, but, and so people follow the rules uh, mostly. But, um, you know, it, it, there, there's tighter rules around it. But it, you mentioned earlier about the chill filtering. It is non-chill chill filter. And, uh, and that's one thing that kind of sets it apart. Now, is it typical bourbon notes? Yes. Uh, are they well pronounced in it? Sure. You know, for a $26 bourbon. But the price point is fantastic. Oh yeah, for a clean, pure bourbon. If you just want to, uh, like, like this is your your quintessential. Yep, it has apple, caramel, vanilla. That's it right there, uh, and and it's a hundred proof. So you know, but I didn't bring it up because it wasn't unique enough. It, it is unique for the price. I think it, it, it stands up well to that price. Um, That's a good honorable mention. Um, one of mine, which I have to bring up, and this is, I was in the, yeah, this is, was the one that competed with the Ben Romick. Um, and I'm going to pour some of it now because it is just stellar. Um, this is the Glendronic 15 year old revival. Mm. This is a, 46% ABV single malt scotch. It is uh, non-chill filtered. It is all natural color. And it is 100% uh, maturation in ex Olorosa sherry and ex Pedro Jimenez sherry. And the thing about that is, is PX sherry or Pedro Jimenez sherry, PX, is a very um, sweet, fruity sherry. And Oloroso, you tend to get more of the dry fruit, the darker fruits. I mean, just you know, for for the sake of it, this is around a eighty-five to hundred dollar bottle, and I will tell you this: if you want a scotch that has no bourbon influence and no peat influence and just straight up delicious X sherry, this is the one to buy. I mean, gorgeous, mm -hmm. absolutely gorgeous whiskey. It smells like Christmas in a glass. Tons of bright fruits, dry fruits. It's all fruit, man, all fruit. And it's fantastic. Um, Glendronic, this 15 Revival, yeah, is around, sometimes you'll find it for 75. The most you'll ever pay is 100. I think, 
even at $100, this is a buy on site. Like, this is a Scotch whiskey that I think for people who are really into, like, again, the they don't want the smoke. They don't want the peat. They want the, like, the richness, the dark fruits, the bright sweetnesses. Dude, you can't go wrong with this. I, I, I highly recommend it. And I'm sure, I know, I saw Daniel and, and Andrew Page were chatting. Y'all probably know about the Glendronic 15 Revival. Like, stellar, stellar whiskey. Um, it does have some of the some of the caramels and the toffees that you get off, uh, you know, an oak cask. But mm -hmm. just breathing it in, man, it, it it's just decadent. It's decadent. It's decadent. Let me just put it that way. Yeah, Daniel's asking if I've ever tried any of the uh, uh, Texas single malts from Balcone. Is mm -hmm. Balcone or Bal? How do you say that? Bal I, think Balcone. Story, but I don't know. Anyway, don't or know. any Iron Root Republic bourbons. I tell you, when I was in Texas, I lived there for for about seventeen years. I was uh, sadly being extremely snobby about my bourbon <laughs> and uh it was before i had the channel before i decided to do all of this and i um you know only bought blanton's and you know the the, the big name yeah. high dollar well step away from this I'll be right back sure um eh taylor that type of stuff and you know i didn't really get into um reasonably priced bourbons i snub my nose at anything uh for a while um and and that well that's not the the way to be uh i'm i matured uh since then but uh you know when i op had my eyes open and, and i was like damn i can find good bourbons for it started with me for around 45 50 dollars then i found not always but you can find really decent bourbons uh in the even high 20s uh, mid 30 dollar range and uh a couple of them here are a testament to it uh now bourbon i know has been hyped a lot lately uh certain brands and they've been going up but um i, I bet at the time i could have gotten my hands more readily on some of this stuff uh if the price had jacked up on it, I probably would have bought it. And then I probably would have uh, thought it was great. Uh, but I was still equating price with quality uh, back then. And, and I've, I've, I've learned better. I've corrected my ways. Now, I still like uh, Garrison Brothers, uh, you know, $130 a bottle. But my channel is dedicated to under $100. Um, and so I, I won't have high dollar bourbons on here um i think he's coming back now i'm back now i, was, now I have uh, i do have tx bourbon behind me they're they're relatively newer uh firestone and robertson uh that's a texas bourbon and we can get it here uh tx bourbon is delicious now typical bourbon notes uh you know but there there's some stuff you can dig out of there uh but it is easy to drink uh, very easy to drink uh, and nothing off putting about it at all. And I think it's a, it's a, a heck of a, a debut, you know, for them. Uh, they've only had this out for a couple of years, you know, or, or so. So they, I left Texas before they even put the first bottle out. Um, and that, that's one of my new old standbys. Uh, and it's only around $35. Nice. I'm totally with you on the old tub. Uh, I do have myself a nice bottle of that because, and, and for all the exact reasons you said, punch is above its weight, 50% ABV. It is, you know, non-chill filtered. It's just like fantastic. <laughs> you know, uh, you can't go wrong with it. Curious. Um, I have two things I want to ask you. One is, what is your general feeling on Old Elk? And if there is one that you would recommend, which one would it be? And second, what are your top three bourbons that you own or that you've ever tasted? Okay. So first, let me let me pull the Old Elk up here, wherever it, it got, it's made its way off to. Hang on. Um, 
I'm just going to slip, sit my Glendronic 15 revival. Oh, there it is. I was looking for this unique uh, top on it. Uh, so this is this is one I, I like. And, and caveat: I didn't I didn't bring it up here because I didn't want to do a blend. Uh, it is a blended uh, bourbon uh, with multiple mash bills. Okay. So I can get that thing to yep. focus in. It's just the uh, blended straight bourbon whiskey. So it's a blend of straight bourbon whiskeys. And straight uh, bourbon means it was in the barrel for at least four years. So they're like an so they're like barrel, like kind of like independent bottlers, or are they just buying MGP stuff and or no, they're well, it's old elk distillery. Okay, so right. there are okay. Right. So but uh, this is a, a a blend of different mash bills and they don't really tell what they are. You know, because, you know, you can have one that's a higher ride than one that's more of a wheat to add this tone to it and all that. And you can kind of uh, blend them at different amounts. They, they're not going to tell you what that is, you know, that, that brings it together uh, because that would be proprietary to them. But uh, 88 proof. Uh, but this is a really, really good uh, blended uh, bourbon. And that's just the, the, the standard the standard one? Yeah, the standard one. Um, I like it, and I also have a Breckenridge. Oh, around here. That's always one that I shied away from and didn't know what to do with. I'd be curious what your thoughts are on Breckenridge. Yeah, uh, I like Old Elk better. Yeah, but is there Breckenridge a weeded one too? I mean, I know uh, Old Elk is supposed to be like high wheat, right? Yeah, it's sweeter. Uh, yeah, I mean, and, and that's another reason why I didn't pull it up. I mean, there's not a lot of uniqueness to it. Um, from a breakaway from, from your standard bourbon, you know, uh, man, I mean, every bourbon's going to have a uniqueness to it. You know, it's eye color will be a little different. It's hair will be a little different. You know? <laughs> but, uh, Who's the daddy? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's see where did I get this from? Right here. I don't have these in any particular order, but I. I try well, who's to... doing that? If folks in the chat, if you've yet to sub, give uh, yeah, give us a thumbs up, and you know, hit up Bourbon Bounty with a sub. <laughs> if you haven't subbed to Malt Muser Whiskey Reviews, hit me up too. Um, I do whiskey reviews every Friday, and Bourbon Bounty's got what a couple times a week, right? Or well, I I was before Ooh, the right, company right. I worked for got acquired. Um, yeah, it's killing me. Uh, now, before before I, I, I name my top bourbons, yeah, uh, caveat on my shelf. Okay, that's fair. I mean, you could also go with the the top three bourbons you've ever tasted. Oh, okay, All right, well we we can get whatever it. way you want to do it. I'm I'm curious about both. All right, so this one almost made the list tonight oh wow really oh, the yeah. really which one is that this is uh single barrel uh it just says bourbon whiskey uh it, it, it's aged under four years now they they kind of broke the rules there with that um you can't call it a, str a straight bourbon unless it's in the barrel oh, four years. Right, right. You can call it a bourbon and, and age it, but it has to be more than two, but under four. But the rule is you have to put an age statement if it's under four. Well, they didn't put an age statement. They don't say whether it's 18 months or, or I mean, uh, you know, 36 months or or. Two two and a half years. They just say aged under four years. Well, what what the hell does that mean? Right, you know? right, right, right. So, yeah. but <laughs> this right. is a high. Of course, it's over fifty one percent corn, and I can't remember the exact one, but the entire rest of the grain in it is millet grain. Oh, that's the one you got. So uh, that's what I was going to ask you because I know that they have another one that's like oat grain. Yeah, I've I've wanted to try. So that's the millet one. Yep, okay. and it is very unique. Very unique. Chicago, or I'm thinking a few. 
Chicago, I think. Yeah. No, Chicago yeah, too, it's right? Chi-town. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, it's Chicago. Yeah. A uh, few, cool. though, I think they're Chicago too. Let me let me look. Yeah, a few is or Evanston, which is you know just yeah, north suburbs. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a few. Uh, I used to... Yeah, Evanston, Illinois. Yeah. Yep, yep, yeah. That's yeah, that's the north suburbs of Chicago. I mean, I'm in Philly now, but I uh, I grew up in Milwaukee, so I, I got a pretty good sense of the Chicago land. <laughs> All right, so on my shelf. All right, let's hear I it. Think the number one bourbon. And I know this is going to be a hell of a caveat, <laughs> but it's a specific batch. Oh. And it is the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof B520. Yeah, buddy. That's that's th- this right here. That dude. Floor is yours, man. It has to be the B520. 127.2 proof. Hell yeah. That. This stuff here for the price, I paid sixty three dollars or something like that for this bottle. You know, my friend, allow me to cheers you. I got one right here as well. Oh, you know what? I'm I'm gonna pour a little. Do it. It's it is that good. Uh, I have plenty yeah. of snifters. I have more snifters than I have scents. So. <laughs> The thing about the B520 that just set it apart from the otherwise pretty much all stellar uh, oh, is how rounded it is. Like that one I found to be so much more rounded and like you could you sip that thing neat and you know what? I'm going to put some in the glass. Daniel's fuck it. We're going we're going B520. I'm telling you it is it's a unicorn amongst unicorns. Mm. How many bottles wow. of it have you went through? <laughs> or is it uh, you're savoring it? Mm, savoring. <laughs> savoring. I'm no, I, I had uh, two bottles. That's yeah, my I'm thing. Finish but... mine and as you can see, I'm getting low. There's again, I my review. I, I did a review of this on my channel. It was a five out of five for me. It was the sec. It was number two on my whiskeys of the year for 20, uh, 2020. And it's for all those reasons. I buy every release of the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. I usually do a review of them. And the thing that set this one apart, and again, I love pretty much. There hasn't been a bad release of this in years. That is so good. Mm. Yeah. But the thing about this one is there was a roundedness to it that even at cast strength, 63.6%, you could sip this thing neat and it and it, 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 and it just worked. It just worked. And like that just doesn't happen. Like the, most of them have a little bit of heat. Yeah. Hell yeah, Daniel. I'm on it. Yeah. You noticed I didn't pour much. I can't find a B520 anymore. Yo, I just found one and I paid a hundred bucks for it, and I feel like that was a smart move because I just I need another one. I need another one. Like I want to have. I can, yeah, the batch I can find is A something. What, what is it? The A120. That one's yeah. fantastic, man. The oh, A- I'm gonna grab the bottle. But it, I mean, it ain't this one. Yeah, I know. Oh, Slancha, man. Cheers. Mm, cheers. That is. Banging. Mm-hmm. I call it balanced. It's over. I call it it's over. There's no, yeah, you know what I mean? There's the alcohol burn that you should get off of this isn't there like you do on the other batches. It's like, it's so much more subtle. It's mm-hmm. it's like wrapped up in the like raspberry. Oh, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? That raspberry kind of chocolate cake thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rice. Oh man! Oh, when we lived in Texas, my wife used to get this uh, chocolate raspberry mousse cake. Dude, right, exactly. Right. And and then we would get uh, a raspberry uh, port wine, 
and it was like a dessert wine and it came in this little half bottle because that was the, the biggest they would sell it in because it'll knock you well I, I won't finish that sentence but it, it, it'll 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 put a dent in your head if you drink too much of it uh but uh i mean the cake or the wine didn't have seeds in it but I, when i would drink it i could it was so it tasted so much like fresh raspberry i i felt like i could taste the seeds you know in my mouth and, and you ever had like a like a fruit compote you know where it's like there's like a lot of the chunks of the fruit in it it's kind of mm -hmm. a berry thing that's what it, that's what this tastes to me on the end along with of course like the vanilla the toffee there's right. no alcohol burn, man. And like, I don't understand what happened with this one, but they, it, it is just stellar. I, oh, I don't yeah. know that there's a better bourbon that I've had. I really don't. Like, it, it is, it is, again, like the only ones I compare it to are like other Elijah Craig Barrel proofs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, there are other ECBPs where I'm like, I like the A119. I like, you know, uh, but this one, man, is special. Special. What a delicious whiskey. The only other ones, so my top three include this. Uh, the other two that it includes is the um, uh, Blanton Straight from the Barrel, which I was just blown away by when I had it. My third choice is tough because I think it's like, yeah, obviously I could take a BTAC stag. Obviously, like there's like all of those. But honestly, what it is was one of the things you were going to choose tonight. Old Forester, 19. Yeah. It's That's a good one. That's a good one. Perfect, man. Like for my palate, it's just, it's a perfect bourbon. It's just a perfect bourbon. Yeah. It is fantastic, uh, but I call I call this uh, the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof dangerous because <laughs> I mean it doesn't feel like you're drinking 130 freaking nope. you know. <laughs> <laughs> They're so good, man. There's just like I no other Elijah Craig Barrel Proof drinks like this one. That I've had. And I've had every one of them for the last four years, and none of them drink like this. This is this is special. And usually the B batches, I find are like the worst, <laughs> and worst being relative because they're all amazing. Right. Like this one maybe doesn't have the complexity, as complex as a couple others, but it, the way it drinks, the fact that I can drink this neat and I'm not like holy cow, there's just no alcohol in this. You're right. Dangerous is the right word. I mean, I have not. This is my second bottle. I can't find it anymore, so I'm I'm slow sipping this one. And I'm I have I tried. I thought about, and I say I tried. I tried to get myself to add a couple of drops of water to it once, and I said I don't want to because it's perfect. Yeah, right. You know. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, man. I totally hear you. Yeah, it's just, there's, you can't ask for more. When you take price into consideration, especially, mm. you cannot ask for more than this. There's nothing that's going to beat this. I mean, show me a stag junior that maybe there's a stag that competes, but this this is just standout stuff, man. There's okay. no doubt about it. I'd be, I would be satisfied if this was the only bourbon I drank for the rest of my life. Now, if you want to talk about uh, what I call not bourbons. <laughs> well, you know, if you want to go down that route. Uh... Well, what, what, what I call, and, and I, I'm kind of being a, a snob about it. I, I, I don't. Uh, there is a, a rule. You can finish your bourbons. This is the only whiskey you need in your life. Oh, really? For non-bourbons. Brook Lottie Black Art 4.1. All right. Probably about 400 bucks, maybe 500 now, but it's worth it. All right. Well, what I was, I was going to say sure. is fin finished bourbons. And, and, and they're really bourbons. You know, they're bourbons. It's just, 
uh, I'd rather see you choose like different types of corn, different types of grain to, to, you know, change the, the notes and flavor and profile rather than pouring it in a barrel and just taking on the, because the thing is finished bourbons are a hit or a miss. I mean, we, we always say we pick the bourbon apart. We, we, we look at, at how it was uh, and, and even right. the, the scotch and all, but no one picks apart what was in that damn barrel. True. You know, was it uh, something good? in that bourbon barrel before you know was it good? <laughs> right 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 was it, was it a decent cabernet you know that that they yeah. or they just they buy the cheapest barrel they could you know and i know that doesn't impart a, a standout huge amount of flavor but i think one of my favorite finished bourbons is the burning chair mm. i'm not familiar with that one this is really, 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 really good. It is now. It to me, it, it's. Uh, I will tell you, they procure uh, everything, but they procure it nicely. It's uh, produced, produced, so not distilled, and bottled by Savage and Cook, Vallejo, California. It is a bourbon whiskey, and it is finished in Cabernet barrels. And it is, uh, it's unique, I will tell you that. But it is, uh, the, the, the bourbon that they get and the cab barrels they get, it creates this very, very fruity, smooth, easy to sip whiskey. The one I think is uh, way overpriced is, uh, where'd it go? I probably moved it out of sight over here. Did I get rid of it off my shelf? I couldn't keep it over here. I don't think. <laughs> um, hang on, let me see if I still have it back here somewhere. Uh, I must have... Uh, it was a gift from someone, I can tell you that. Uh, you reminded me of something. So once you figure that out, I got to. We have to circle back to the Bellamy story because I'm going to show you something that's going to probably be like, probably piss you off. Right, I have to look over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it. In the meantime, uh, we still got what we got nine folks in the chat. What's up, everybody? We're about to hit hour number two. It's Malt and the Bounty. We are sipping Elijah Craig Barrel Proof B520 because we've moved on to talk about our favorite whiskeys of all time, uh, bourbons of all time, I should be, caveat. Uh, uncontroversial with this one. I see uh, Daniel Richie, oh, 210 Brewing is back. You missed, oh, you missed the, yeah, let me give you the quick recap. Oh, Daniel's got it. Yeah. And Elotsky, lots to Kiaya. The R. Well, I can't totally read that, but uh, for folks hanging out, take a second, give the thumbs up uh, to Bourbon Bounty's live stream we got going on here. If you've yet to, you can subscribe to Malt Muse or Whiskey Reviews and Bourbon Bounty. Do so. We'd love to hang out with you guys again in the future. Oh, he's got the barrel bourbon out. Which which number is that? Oh, this is uh, uh, batch seventeen. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's got a 10 year, four month age statement. It's 112.5 proof. There's way older uh, stuff in there, though, you know. <laughs> right. Cast strength, you know, and all that. But I was so disappointed with. I've never had such a bland cast strength bourbon. <laughs> really? Yeah. Now, you had any of their newer ones, the 25, 26, or 27? I have all three. And let me tell you, they've. They are putting out some stellar, stellar stuff right now. They, 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 they hurt me with this one. Mm. They, they marred their name. I'm gonna have to get you a sample of one of the newer ones. All right, I'll try a sample of it, and then I may go spend ninety dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, that particular bottle sucks. 
I've not had it, but that's disappointing to hear. All right, I man. Mean, I gotta tell you something. All right. Before I forget, so you you brought out that Bellamy cast strength reserve, right? Yep. Um, I gotta show you something. And this is one of the things that I, uh, why I knew a little bit about Bellamy. There you go. This is the hey. Bellamy 10 year cast strength. So this is before they went to NAS. Let me tell you a story about this. And by the way, I will get you a sample of this. This is the last bottle I have. I remember walking into a liquor store in Washington, DC. This is five years ago when these were, they were all over the shelf for 69 a piece. I only bought two. And when I realized what a gem they were. I went back and they were gone. I've never been able to find them again. This is one of the best bourbons I've ever had. Um, I would love to get you a sample of this and compare it to the reserve, which is the thing that they went to after yep. the age statements came out. But yeah, I, this is a 10, <laughs> the 10 year old Bellamede. <laughs> I figured you would be like, oh yeah, you probably know about this one. <laughs> it is hard. Well, and the reason I said non-bourbon for you is you, you would be hard effing pressed to find. So you would have had to have found some obscure bourbon that I've never had, you know. Now, I've, I haven't had a lot from, like, different states, you know. Now, yeah. I've had Wyoming, but Wyoming is more famous than some of them. You know, uh, it got a good review from somebody somewhere. I wasn't that impressed with Wyoming. I mean, it's good, but I wasn't that impressed with it. Um, but I bought it because it was behind the glass, um, you know, and they only had a few bottles of it. And, of course, when that happens, I'm going to grab it. But uh, I will say that there's a lot of people out there looking for Eagle Rare. And Eagle Rare, I would call a, not a starter bourbon, but a not very many bases off of home plate, you know, <laughs> because it's just a good base easy sipping one i mean there's a whole full bottle sitting right there and i moved the other one over there so i i wouldn't i, I know i can drink it at will because i have a whole bottle over here and that's kind of the way i i separate my stuff out yeah is everything over there is full game anytime and uh that's why i turn this table and i put my studio lights back here and pack them away and this is not easy to get to, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I keep my drink. Understood, man. Home. Understood. Do but, you uh, uh, have you ever had an Eagle Rare store pick? No, and I've also not had the seventeen. I've not had the seventeen. No, I have had the seventeen. Mm. I had it at a tasting at a bar in Washington D.C. I have not had any of their store picks, but I feel like if I was going to buy Eagle Rare again, that's the way I would go. I would hunt for a store pick if I could. I, I don't remember, like, I'll be honest with you. Eagle Rare was one of the first higher end bourbons that I ever bought. And I don't even remember what it tastes like. I just don't. I just, I know everybody's hyped about it, which, you know, whatever. And it's a 10 year old, it's above 40% ABV. It checks a lot of boxes. I just don't remember the last time I had one. <laughs> I don't remember the profile at all. And maybe that says something about it. Like maybe it just says something about how it's, you know, it is just one of these uh, uh, all pomp and circumstance whiskeys, you know? Well, there was somebody I met last year, uh, sub my channel. We were chatting. We were talking about, you know, bourbons. We swapped a couple of bourbons and he sent me a sample and said, this is, is because we were talking and I, he said if you if you had the 23 the pappy 23 and wow. i said no i haven't had it the closest i've had is the uh old rip you know i've had the old rip van right Rip. right 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 yeah and that was only a snifter of but i had a you know good snifter of it uh i think some uh vendor paid 60 bucks or 65 bucks for me to have a snifter of it one time and um 
we uh so he sent me a a vial sample Mm -hmm. and we jumped on we didn't go live or broadcast but i started a stream yard and we jumped on so that we could try it together and i thought he was jerking my chain (laughs) and i thought he had sent me something different and i really thought he was trying to get me on it and i said I said, well, it's great that you're getting to drink Pappy 23 and I'm not, you know. (laughs) And I was, I could not believe the few notes that was in that. There was no, I don't know. I was not impressed with it. All right. And that's fair. I mean, uh, there was some musty oak, you know, coming through a little, but man, it was like all the flavor died in it. You know, and um, he got really offended, unsubbed me, and we never talked again. Wow, really? So, Damn. Sorry. I thought you were pulling a leg. Sorry you paid $2,000 because he, he said he, he got it cheap for $2,000. Jesus, man. That's uh, that's a little bit of a harsh approach to things, wouldn't you say? Uh, wow. Damn. But I mean, you know, because I I have some friends now. I met him online, and you know, but I know I have some Air Force buds that would send me Listerine and tell me to to uh, review it live. You know, sure, sure, just to see if I would, you know, yeah. <laughs> right on, man. Well, hey, this has been fun, dude. I think we've, uh, yeah, we've hit the two hour mark. I got to. Uh, get working on signing off some other stuff to do tonight unfortunately but i'm perfectly buzzed for it uh this is oh, a lot yeah. Of, and yeah for folks in the chat if you've yet to man thumbs up the video sub to bourbon bounty so they want these whiskey reviews and we should do this again sometime man all right so uh thanks everybody who joined for joining and if you're still here i hope you learned something hope you found some good tips uh, sounds like most of y'all have already tried uh, some of the stuff that we were throwing out there. But if you haven't, uh, hey, go grab a bottle of it. You won't be disappointed. Uh, it may not be the best thing you have on your shelf. It may not be the worst. You know, it, it might end up being uh, uh, something you, you really like. It's, it's a personal journey and people like different things and, and people pull out different notes. So I don't think you can go wrong with anything that was that we brought up on here tonight. So with that. We're going to go ahead and sign off. As always, please like and subscribe. Hit the bell down there for notifications. And I promise I'll keep bringing you these videos. Righteous, man. Take care. Be well.